Hi and welcome to Civic Racing. Today I'll help you get faster at Power Racing Go-Kart Academy so you can beat all your friends. In the background you can see a video of my fastest lap ever done at that track. It's important to state that being a rental kart center, there will always be a difference in speed and handling between the different carts. So every cart will have to be driven with slight adaptations. Some of the techniques I use on this lap are very advanced and hard to imitate. If your cart control is not yet at that level, you will go faster by using a more regular racing line and technique. But I'll get back to that later. Just finishing up the lap here. A 30.23. First, you need to understand three terms. Turn in, apex, and track out, as seen on this photo. Turn in is where you would usually lift off the gas pedal or even brake. Apex is the point where you're the closest to the inside curbing. On this photo, there is shown a late apex, meaning the apex is after the midpoint of the inside curb. This results in a better speed out of the corner. Track out is where you end up almost hitting the wall on the outside. If you're not almost hitting the wall, then you're most likely not bringing enough speed to the corner. Now, some general tips for karting. First off, keep your hands in the same spot on the wheel, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. This will help your sensitivity and kart control. Second, don't slide the kart, meaning don't let the back slide around when turning, and don't slide over the front tires either. Sometimes turning the wheel more means you're turning less. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Look up oversteer and understeer if you want to know more about this. Third, use all of the track, like shown on the racing line photo. It's important to maximize the track width to maintain a higher cornering speed. Fourth, turn as little as possible. This goes back to what I was saying about understeer. If you feel that the cart is not turning more when you add more steering lock, then turning more will only scrub off more speed. Going back to the footage, we arrive at one of the hardest corners on the track, the 1-2 combo. The most important thing to understand is that these corners are one unit, and focus in turn 1 is to get a very good run through in turn 2. If done well, throttle should be all the way down from the moment you hit the apex of turn 1 till you hit turn 4, 5, or in some carts you can stay flat till the mid part of turn 7. In order to stay flat through turn 2, it's important to get a very late apex in turn 1. Keep turning past the apex, aiming almost at the big pit sign to really open up turn 2. Take turn 2 with a normal apex and use all the track on exit. When it comes to the entry to turn 1, there are two ways to go about it. The easier way, which would be normal brake in a straight line, ease off the brake while adding steering and make sure to hit the late apex. All of this done with a focus of not sliding the cart. I would recommend this variant if you're new in karting and are still having a hard time doing consistent laps. Then the way I do it here is very hard to get right. I force the cart to slide, but not like a drift slide. More just a very gentle oversteer without opposite lock on the steering wheel. As you can see my wheel is pretty much straight from the time I turn in till the apex. This happens as the rear tires are only slightly braking traction sliding over the surface. If I did it perfectly I wouldn't have to turn the wheel at all after the initial turn to start the slide. The slight drift would then end just at the apex when I need to get back on the throttle. This is slightly faster if done well because I have to travel a shorter distance but optimally arriving at the apex with the same speed, making me not lose the time again after the apex. Turn 3 is a pretty simple flat out double apex right turn. You don't need to go super wide between the two apexes, but it's important that you end up hugging the right wall after T3, setting you up for a good turn 4. In turn 4 you need to get close to the wall on turn in and at the apex, getting a slight late apex setting you up for a better turn 5 by sacrificing some track on the right on exit. The run through turn 5 is more important because the longer straight coming after it. This means we will also go for a late apex in turn 5, but this time a classic racing line, getting very close to the curb on turn in, apex and also track out. Here we really want to maximize the track width and the exit speed. Both of these turns normally doesn't need any braking, usually a slight lift of the throttle will do. Turn 6 is easy flat out, 
where we want to hug the right wall to get ready for the very complex corner. Coming into the corner at full speed, turning between the two concrete pillars, missing the first apex slightly to open up the corner's second apex, making a very late apex for the second. This makes sure that you can take turn 8 flat out. With all this entry speed, you will need to lift a bit in the corner. When you lift off the gas, don't lift off too harshly. You will lose the weight over the rear tires, making them slide at a lower speed. Keeping some pressure on the throttle will help you stabilize the rear. This is the most important corner to get right because it leads on to the main straight. And once you go fully on the gas here at the second apex, you should not lift again before braking for turn 1. If you can't make it through turn 8 flat, you need to open up the corner even more with a later second apex through turn 7. Let's put it all together and watch the full lap one more time. With that, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Feel free to leave questions and suggestions in the comment section below. This was Tivic Racing. See you next time.